Well, it's that time again. The time when I dictate your purchasing decisions and dive deep into another Z690 board. This time is the ASUS offering, which is the ASUS Turf Z690 Plus. Now this board is just short from being $300, and at that price, it's in the upper echelons of Z690 boards. So is it worth it? Um, uh, kind of, maybe, who knows. Because the thing is that right now, the Wi-Fi DDR4 version of this board costs the exact same as the Wi-Fi DDR4 version of the MSI Tomahawk Z690, another fantastic board which I covered on this channel before, so that video is going to be up in the iCards. And when choosing which board represents the better value, there's quite a few things you should keep in mind. Firstly, starting off with CPU power delivery, things are looking pretty good for this board. It has 14 plus watt power phases, rated at 80 amps. That is actually pretty solid stuff, and combine that with both an 8 pin and a 4 pin for the CPU, and wow, your processor is going to be getting a lot of nice clean power. Now even though it sounds fairly decent, the MSI Tomahawk, on the other hand, has 16 plus 1 phases. And that is nothing compared to the Aurus Pro board. Now this board passes the $300 mark, so it may not be for everyone, but that thing has 16 plus 1 plus 2 power phases, rated at 90 amps. So if you're all about giving your CPU the tastiest, cleanest, best power possible, then that will probably be the better board for you. If you don't, well even this tough board should be able to support even an overclocked 12900K. Okay, yes, that comes with a massive asterisk the size of Jupiter, but still, most people who just use their PCs normally won't see any difference in how their CPUs perform between these different variations on the VRM designs. So overall, the power delivery is fine but unimpressive, but thankfully this board has other great things going for it. For example, PCE expansion. Naturally you have your main PCE Gen 5 16x slot, another physical 16x slot at the bottom, and an in-between two 1x slots and ooh look at that, that's something you don't see often in boards anymore, a PCE 4x slot. Now whether you like this or not will really depend on what you need, even I don't know if I like it or not, because naturally there's still a lot of people out there who use PCE 4x cards and there's a lot of them on the market still, and we can all agree that just from a looks perspective, having a dedicated 4x slot for your 4x card looks way better than having it take up an entire 16x slot even if electrically it's only 4x so if you do have a 4x card that needs a comfortable home well this motherboard might be just the thing for you because you just don't see them often nowadays however what most companies do is just simply put another physical 16x slot right there in the middle just for the sake of compatibility and there's clearly enough space for it there so yeah like i said it really just depends on what exactly you need there are going to be people out there who wish that it was 16x for the sake of compatibility, and others who would like the fact that their 4x cards finally have a place they can call home. Add to that the fact that this board also has 4 M.2 slots with 3 of them having heat sinks, and honestly, when it comes to PCI expansion, you're all good to go on this board. And that's not the only interesting internal I.O. Because also on this board you can find an internal Thunderbolt connector, an internal USB Type-C connector, and also four... Wait, what? Really? Yeah, apparently you only get four SATA connectors on this board. Like, I literally even covered B660 boards on this channel that cost half as much but still have eight SATA connectors. And yes, I know many people nowadays may not need that many SATA connectors, but still, it's just one of those things you expect to have as standard in such a high-end Z690 board. So I have no idea what the excuse is here. Anyway, disregarding all of that, let's move on to the rear I.O. And oh my word, what on earth is going on here? What am I even looking at? Did someone arrange this blindly? What is going on? Why are there like random gaps everywhere? Why are these things not aligned? What am I looking at? Um, mm, okay. Disregarding all of that uh, creative placement of the rear I.O., it's actually fairly decent. You have a total of 6 USB Type-A ports and look, not a single one of them is USB 2.0. All of them are at least USB 3 speeds, which is pretty awesome. 
if not for the fact that, well, six USB Type A ports will probably still not be enough for many people. And there's clearly space for more, they could have just added at least two more USB 2.0 ports here, just even for our mouse and keyboards to make this experience a lot better. Because the thing is that a lot of people need a lot of USB capacity, but not bandwidth. Things like keyboards, mice, stream decks, audio interfaces, that kind of stuff just requires a lot of USB ports, but not really a lot of bandwidth. So while it's cool and all that it can say that all of the USB is at least USB free, at the same time it makes it kind of more difficult for the user because, well, you're going to be running out of those six USB Type A ports very fast. But hey, at least you have some pretty fast USB Gen 3.2 by 1 or whatever, I don't know. I've gave up trying to remember exactly what all these weird USB names mean nowadays, seeing how they change them what feels like every other weekend. Thankfully to make up for the lack of USB Type A, you do have two USB Type C ports, which you don't see often in C690, and one of them is even USB 3.2 2x2, no USB, please, stop, stop. This is nonsense. This is pure nonsense. Please stop it with these names. Disregarding all of that USB nonsense, you also have HDMI and DisplayPort for integrated graphics, plus also 2.5 gig Ethernet. So all in all, it's a interesting board, right? It does a lot of stuff right. However, compared to its main competitors who are priced so similarly, it doesn't do enough differently to warrant the price. I mean, the MSI Tomahawk, which costs the exact same, has better rear I.O. and better power delivery, so honestly, why should anyone go for this board? Or if you want even better power delivery and better rear I.O., disregarding the audio, then just save up a few more dollars and go for the Z690 Eurus Pro. But the thing is, seeing how this board comes in DDR4, DDR4 Wi-Fi, DDR5 and DDR5 Wi-Fi variants, Odds are you might find one on sale somewhere that will actually beat out its competitors price-wise. And in that case, yeah, totally go for it. It's still an amazing board with amazing features. And not to mention, people who really want a dedicated 4X slot are going to find comfort here, seeing how many people are turning away from the 4X slot on their motherboards. So no, it's not a bad board. It's just badly priced. But if you still want to buy this or other Z690 motherboards, then our Amazon links are going to be down in the video description below. But you know what isn't badly priced? The merch at our merch store, which is going to be down in the video description below. We just got some new awesome designs in, so definitely go and check them out. And if you want to help support the channel in other ways, we also have our Patreon. And even just one singular dollar a month truly goes a long way, while well, you get some awesome perks as well. I also want to thank my existing patrons, Gavin Burns, Ryan, LKB, Meg Sumner, Shane Allcroft, Lance B, Clothing and Jesse Hubman. Thank you guys so so much support truly goes a long way. Down there you're also going to find our Discord server if you want to talk to me or others at this or whatever apps really. Plus down there's our social media links as well. But anyway that's about it so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did remember to subscribe, like, whatever and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>